live from their home studios. Please welcome the hosts of Death Central Connects, Boo Lamb and Jason Rom. Well, hello, Dev Central community. My name is Boo. I am the community evangelist or one of the community evangelists with the Dev Central team. Uh, as Peter was just saying there in the intro, I was to be joined by Jason Rom today. Jason is actually out sick. So we have a special guest that will be joining me and this should be pretty fun. Uh, we're looking forward to it. Uh, today's a special day. I am wearing an Nginx shirt. I've got my Nginx colors in the background because it is microservices March which is put on by Nginx. And so the Nginx team um, has actually put up uh, a whole bunch of materials, if you haven't seen it already, on getting up to speed on microservices. Um, it's all free resources. Uh, they've got webinars, they've got a lot of documentation, and they've got labs. And labs is what we'll do today. And what I wanted to do is actually just highlight where you need to go if you're doing the labs. If if you're watching right now, or if, you, if you've seen the promo for this um, live stream today, it's it's hopefully because you want to check out the lab or maybe you want to do the lab with us, is, which is what we're going to be doing today. And I'm going to give you the link for that now because you actually have to go sign up, wait for the email to come in, and then you will be able to access the labs. So if you want to participate in the labs, head over to nginx.com slash mm. So over in there, you're going to sign up for the labs. Uh, it's going to send you a, a couple emails to get onboarded. We're into week three at this point, but that doesn't mean that you had to go through weeks one and two in order to do week three. Um, some of the knowledge is you you build upon, but you could still get through it if you haven't done the first two weeks of the labs. Um, once you've signed up for that and gotten your email, you will be brought over to a landing page like this. And the resources are all on there. And where you're going to be going is down here. There is so there's the the webinars that they'll have for you. They'll have some documentation for you, and then they've got the lab down here, uh, which is what we'll be doing today with my special guest, uh, who I will bring on in just a moment. But again, you want to make sure if you wanted to do the lab today, head over to nginx.com/mm first. Get signed up for that. It will take a couple moments for that email to come through, and then you'll get access to that. Also, you'll get access to um, uh, the the previous uh, lab weeks as well. Labs one or weeks one and two, and all the materials for that, and the labs for that. You can actually go back redo them multiple times as well, if uh, if you needed to uh, repeat that to. Uh, let that knowledge sink in. So that's what we'll be doing today. Uh, but first, wanted to go over a couple things. Uh, first of all, do I have a do I have a banner for that? No, I don't have a banner for that. I want everybody to also go check out community.f5.com. That is the Dev Central platform. We've changed the URL and we've changed the platform as well. So it's now community.f5.com. When you head over to that community, over on, you know, I'm pointing over here to my web page or my, my web browser, you're going to see uh, a, a few things at the top. So let, let's let's go over the platform for a second. This is the home page. You're seeing this. Let's load that up for you. Across the top here, we've got technical forums where you can go ask questions to the community. Uh, the water cooler, you can go post your daily Wordle score inside of there, among other things, just uh, general chatter. We have our technical articles where F5 folks will actually publish articles that will be helpful to the community, uh, how to type knowledge. Uh, we have crowdsource articles as well. So people outside of um, the F5 employees can actually contribute articles as well. That's a really thriving part of the website. Um, that's what community is all about. And we have a lot of posts inside of there. And then the Dev Central News, which is where the um, announcements uh, happen. Uh, I'm going to skip over a couple of these, though. I want to get over to events because what we're doing here is we have hosted for the past three weeks now. Uh, we're on to week three, and we have this event here, which is what's happening right now, the live stream and the Microservices March lab. But if you head over in, into here, we're ending this lab, this portion of the lab, at 10 o'clock. But we're not going to get through the entire lab in that amount of time. What we're doing is we're going to move everybody over to the platform platform instead. So if you go over into this uh, into this event, you'll actually see a Zoom link down here. 
this is where you need to go to continue on. If you want to follow along myself and my special guest today, if you want to follow us along, uh, we're going to be doing that through that Zoom link. So um, that's where it is. You just have to head over to uh, community.f5.com, find the events on there. Uh, while you're there, go ahead and register for a free account on the website just so that you can keep track of your stuff. You can post your Wordle scores. You can't do replies unless you actually have a login. Um, you can jump in on here even after the event. You can leave comments and, and whatnot as well. Leave questions for your, for the lab if you didn't get to ask something on the uh, on the Zoom chat Zoom chat or inside of here. Um, and then we will uh, we will answer your questions on there as well. So um, just a couple housekeeping items for everybody. And one more thing before we bring on our guest, I do want to highlight a, I started doing this a couple of weeks ago. I want to highlight a, a job of the week. This week I have uh, not one, but 19 jobs that I want to highlight. And I'm highlighting jobs today that are based in Poland. Uh, as we know, with things happening around the world, not to get too into that, but there's a lot of people migrating to Poland right now and a lot of very skilled workers uh, that have migrated over there. Obviously, they have uh, different circumstances, and I'm not saying this is specifically for them, but in Poland, we have an office there and we have 19 open positions that are posted on there. I think some of these are kind of doubled up positions as well, like we might be hiring for multiple of these uh, SOC analysts, um, different levels of that, support engineers, um, stuff on the sales side, technical side uh, as well. So I just wanted to highlight that. You head over to f5.com slash careers. You can filter this by country, hit the Poland filter. You'll see 19 job postings there. I would love to see that actually hit zero because we filled them all. Um, so if possible, if you know anybody that's in that area, check that out. If you know anybody in any part of the world that would love to work at F5, check out all the different uh, countries that we're hiring in. Lots of these positions are remote friendly, um, and 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 we would love to have you if you're passionate about F5, uh, and more importantly, <laughs> well, importantly, passionate about F5, but also very important to be skilled with uh, F5 to a certain degree as well. Some there is training involved, obviously, but um, we'd love to we'd love to take a look. Um, at anybody who would uh, who'd be interested in these positions. All right, so having said all that, let me pull this down and I am going to do, let me just check the comments here. Anybody, uh, okay, that's uh, our research team in the back there. Um, I will go ahead, run a little bit of a segment transition and we'll bring on our special guest. All right, welcome, Daniel Wolf. Thank you very much Hello. for answering the call to join me. Thanks for inviting me. I'm very pleased to be here tonight. Awesome. So for folks who don't know, um, if you do follow the Def Central page uh, on LinkedIn and on Twitter, you'll actually have seen uh, Daniel's face on there uh, before because he was featured as uh, a Def Central member of the month. Uh, Daniel uh, is an MVP with Dev Central as well. And so that's kind of our, our highest tier of member where uh, their contributions to the community deserve being rewarded uh, by the team. And so Daniel uh, is one of those. Um, and Daniel even just recently has a post on Microservices March and getting that lab up and running outside of the hosted lab, but actually running on your laptop as well. And that was a super helpful post because uh, people might not, um, you know, jump into the the hosted platform. They they just want to run it on their own time, and they want to run it uh, outside of the thirty minute allotment that you get on the hosted lab. You can do that on your laptop. So all that stuff super helpful. That's why you're an MVP. Uh, thank you for joining uh, us. Uh, maybe we can take the first couple minutes here for folks who didn't read your background on your featured member of the month article. Maybe you can tell us a, a little bit about yourself, Daniel, your background, and where you're at now. Yep. So um, I work in Germany for uh, um, a five partner company. That call, it's called Controlware. I work there as a professional service engineer. So um, I do all kinds of F5 projects with customers. Um, goes from hardware replacement, migrations, uh, integration uh, with new services, web application firewall configurations, APM projects, all that kind of things. 
and recently also nginx projects yeah okay very cool like nginx uh you've deployed some nginx with the customer we're in the process with two customers to deploy uh, nginx as api gateway yes oh very cool oh that's awesome so this is all very relevant and uh you're kind of cheating because you're already uh, a pro at Nginx uh, and jumping into microservices March with us then. <laughs> I would uh, still consider myself as a learner with Nginx. So there's, it's yeah. similar to Big IP. It's a huge area where you can get specialized in many, many details. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, very cool. Um, so how long have you worked in technology for? Uh, technology, I think now 15 plus years. With F5, I would say close to seven years. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What was the uh, what was the first version of F5 that you worked with? First first version of TMOS. Twelve. It's, uh, it's not that long ago, or it feels like <laughs> time fast uh, passed fast since then. It was twelve. Yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. Uh, that was when the version numbers started to speed up. A little bit so if you're familiar with version 11 we had like version 11.0.1.2.3.4.5.6 and then 12 then we started the TikTok model so then we went <laughs> TikTok. it's a uh, uh, dot zero and then dot one uh we started uh, to do instead so then the versions started to increment the major version started to increment a lot sooner not that it really changed um well it did change how the, the software was um at the features were added uh, into various uh, different versions, but uh, but yeah, the numbers incremented a little bit more uh, back then. Um, I think I recall from your um, MVP article that you were actually previously a SharePoint uh, guru instead instead of F5. Yes, indeed. So um, it was SharePoint and in general, general IIS and .NET web applications, and this is also how I turned to F5. So. There was a project to implement a web application for Airwolf for an online banking application that was written in .NET. And yeah, the natural choice for a WAF was F5. And at that point in time, I said, wow, this is what I want to do from now on. Forget about SharePoint, forget about mm -hmm. IIS and .NET. This is my new, <laughs> new home. Yeah, oh, very yeah. cool. Uh, and did you find Dev Central right away when you were working with F5, or did you? Did, was there a story behind how you got started with Dev Central? Um, I was hinted to Dev Central from the guys who helped us back then to integrate the F5 in our environment, mm. and um, I was for quite a long time. I was a reader and passive consumer. I would say in the last two years, I um, was more actively contributing. Yeah, but yeah, yeah the the, cool. the guys who helped me to to get started with the five, they said, "Look, go there. There you will you'll find help. You will find uh, excellent uh, help with iRules, which I think still is like the go-to source if you are yeah. trying to do anything with iRules. Start from Dev Central." Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, when you have folks like Jason uh, on board that can can help out, and and folks uh, beside you know on previous episodes we have had guys like. Uh, Joe Martin and, and Kevin Stewart that uh, and and others that that help out with those questions as well. So it's really cool. Um, and your contributions are greatly appreciated. Um, if anyone wants to connect with Daniel on LinkedIn to learn about Daniel, to learn about Controlware, the link is down here uh, for his LinkedIn. Uh, you can check him out on there. So um, without further ado, we'll get into the lab here, uh, perhaps, and let me pop up uh, your screen, Daniel. We'll work off of there. You're the mm -hmm. lab rat today, I guess. Yep. So let's, uh, let's bring that up. Now, okay. uh, are we, we're running the lab from your machine, I guess, today, preference? Exactly. That's the one mentioned in the article. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. I will, let me highlight that too. Actually, let me, let me highlight something here. So if folks, mm -hmm. I'll pull that down. If folks are running through the lab in the traditional way, this, this way does have a little bit more guidance around stuff, but the, the downside of it is you do have 30 minutes. So it's kind of give or take the UI is, is, um, very user-friendly when you go this route. So when you go over into the landing page and hit launch lab, you'll, you'll, get moved over to this platform called Instruct. 
and here you'll be able to launch the lab. Now, what Daniel's done is just in case anybody wants to actually run the lab locally on their machine and not have to um, uh, try to finish it within 30 minutes, there's an article under crowdsource in order to spin up that lab uh, on your local machine, which, which Daniel's done, which uh, we're all really grateful for, for who, folks who just wanna continue to play with this for extended periods of time. Okay, so let's pop over here. Okay. All right. Then let's get started with our task for today. Protect Kubernetes apps from SQL injection. Yeah, should be a fun one. Work. Okay. So there's a bit of backstory here I saw already. I work for a popular local IT store that sells a variety of goods from pillows to bicycles. And we want to launch our online store. Okay, and the security expert found the problem. The store is vulnerable to SQL injection. Okay, and we should fix that. Then let's spin up. First challenge is deploy a cluster and the vulnerable app. And we'll go with Minikube. Start. There's a typo. So I think in the lab, if we, if folks are going to run it locally there on their mini cube, oh yeah, in the blog article, it, it gives you an idea of what you'll need for your machine. Two CPUs, two gigs of free memory, 20 gigs of uh, disk space, so very modest requirements to, to run this uh, mini cube here. And it's pretty quick to install too. Yep. Good. Yeah, usually to start Minikube is like a minute or two, and then you're mm -hmm. good to go. Yep. And are you doing a lot of microservices uh, integrations these days, Daniel? Not yet. Uh, here in Germany, the market is a bit like either they did not start yet, or they are the customers are so far advanced that they run the show pretty much by themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of our um, one, one of our highlighted uh, nginx use uh, case studies is actually Audi. Um, mm -hmm. I've, I, I've worked. <laughs> I was uh, working with them for a year. Um, okay. Running running their um, yeah running their um, infrastructure parts of their infrastructure. Okay. It's interesting, Very cool. really interesting. Okay, so we will create a deployment with the MariaDB database and the PHP web application to retrieve the data. Um, I already downloaded the YAML file. Okay, cool. And then we can run kubectl to apply. Just like that. Yeah. So, did you take a look what, what we get here? We get. Uh... Yeah, we can flip through that. Yeah. So we've got. Let's see, I'll open up on my screen too. We've got an image. One, uh, one image that is from the Dev Central repository, Microservices Merge. Yeah. Connects to a database. And uh, service definition, yeah. port 80. Uh, exactly. And then another deployment. This is the Maria DB. The database. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. OK. Then let's see. All of this is running. They are still creating. OK. I hear it said it can take up to 40 seconds for them to fully deploy. Okay, let's okay. wait a bit. Oh, 
Very cool. Um, the app is there, database, still not. Great. So do you work uh, with Ubuntu as your main desktop or, or laptop or workstation? I would love to, <laughs> but I'm a huge fan of, uh, of Visio and there's I did not find a decent replacement. So I, um, yeah. I went so are we, to we're in a VM here? Yeah, yeah, we are in a VM. So I, I okay. went away to Office 365 and uh, there's not a, I don't want to use the, all the Office 365 apps only in the browser. That's, yeah. that's why I'm stuck with Windows. Otherwise, I would switch immediately. Yeah. OK, so from the last, uh, from the last labs, we learned that this command does not work in the Ubuntu VM. But we figured out that minikube service minus minus all will show us that this is the right. IP and the port. And then we can access the app. Cool. So, as promised, so routers, bicycles, pillows, they have everything. Okay, then we arrive at the second challenge. This is to hack the app. Um, simple application is rather basic and we can access the products over this URL slash product. So if I yep. go here, I will go to product five. Mm -hmm. Okay, this works expected and now the task for us is um to tinker here with the url right mm -hmm. so if we use a different product id we should uh, provocate an uh, sql sql error message yeah okay then let's try that put a negative no Meant to replace everything. Put a negative number. Uh, and then we get invalid product ID. Okay, so therefore we can assume that the statement on the back end is select asterisk from some table where ID equals one. And if we replace minus one with something, then we could probably get the SQL injection. Okay. Then we should try this one. This is not making me happy with this autocomplete. <laughs> Does it take away the URL when you click on it? Is that what's happening? It seems like yeah. It's, okay, so only this and then we paste. Okay, let's see now. Okay. All right. Okay. And then we can start to play around with other SQL injection commands. Mm -hmm. Okay. For convenience, I pasted them here. All right. And okay, so this is provoking SQL error. And according to the lab guide, this is expected. Or not. 
but it should give us the last item from the database. Okay. This is the last byte item, no? I think so. If you compare the home page, bicycle is the last item. Okay, that's us. That's okay. And then the next, we should try this one and we should expect an error message. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Let's go back here. And here it's a bit explained what this SQL actually does. So minus one forces return uh, an empty set from the first query. Union forces two databases, uh, database tables together. And then we can do union select asterisk from user. And then this one, this sequence is uh, to discard everything that is afterwards. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then here they gave us a couple of queries that, um, that we should try. So here, this should return us two columns, three columns, four columns, five columns. So we should get the complete information about the user and let's go over them. This will return us only one I did not. I make a copy and paste mistake eventually. Take the whole thing and put it together here. Yeah, those. I think those ones will fail until you get to the one with the right, the correct amount of columns. Okay. Which one did you try the two columns? I wouldn't try now the one with one column. Okay. Okay. This fails. Then should we skip ahead to the one with the complete we can do that. five columns? Yeah. Um, so we're actually at almost 10 o'clock. So let's, let's do this. I am going to, let's pause there for a second. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of things here that I'll mention. The, okay, let me remove that. So what we're doing here, and I only mentioned this, we're skipping ahead. Let's let's fast forward in terms of the, the lab here. We're doing a SQL injection. Um, inside of the lab, they're using a, a filter to um, bind the SQL injection and block the SQL injection from an Nginx perspective from Ingress Controller. And that's fine to do. Um, Nginx also has something called AppProtect, which is a web application firewall that you can implement. That's not part of the lab, but we're highlighting that. And I'm not saying, hey, you have to go buy this thing. But if you want to do it in kind of a proper, manageable, scalable way, then you want to be looking at something like Nginx AppProtect. Again, not trying to not trying to say you have to go buy that, but you'll see pretty quickly here. It's not really scalable to try to write your own signatures. And then somebody can easily kind of reverse that and, and, and figure out a way through. So I'm just highlighting that now before we head over to the Zoom. Now, for the Zoom, let me again highlight where to find that. So if you're, if you're still watching at this point, um, 
Let me bring up my screen here. We are going to shut down this live stream. You head over to community.f5.com, go under events, go under today's date. You'll see microservices March Lab 3, head into there. And we are going to shut down this live stream and we will join this Zoom link right here. So hopefully folks will uh, join us over there. Uh, Daniel's gonna finish off the lab over in that one. And then when you're on the Zoom, you can turn on your camera, you can turn on your mic and you can chat with us and, and come on screen with us. Or if you want to just hang back and just, just uh, passively check things out, that's totally fine as well. You can leave your comments in the Zoom. You can, um, uh, you can leave comments inside of this thread as well. Um, and then I think uh, our, I think the research team is, has posted the link to the Zoom inside of the chat as well. So uh, thank you so far, Daniel. I will see you over in the Zoom uh, in, just, uh, in just a second here. I'm going to highlight uh, a couple things, but uh, maybe I'll let you head over there first, and then I'm going to wrap up the show if that works. Okay. See you in Zoom. All right. Thanks, Daniel. All righty, cool. So just the last couple things here while Daniel is joining that. We have got, on Tuesday, we've got DCC Extra. There is uh, five Tuesdays in the month of March. So we've got an extra show on Tuesday that we're going to do there. Um, I believe we're going to go over the new uh, community platform. Uh, I could be wrong, but I think that's what we're, we've planned. On the next Thursday, the last um, microservices March. So Lab 4, we'll be doing that. And then uh, the next show that we also have planned is At The Edge. Um, I alluded to this the other day. It's called Service Provider Special because there's some products that are coming out with our service providers. Uh, and we're going to have one of our service provider specialists uh, jump on and talk about those new products. I don't think they're announced just yet. And so I've just marked it as service provider special. But there are things that are going to, things that you can run uh, on the service provider edge, I guess, that will be uh, pretty cool. So um, we will see everybody over on the Zoom link. Um, if you're watching this from YouTube, be sure to hit subscribe uh, over down here, and you'll get uh, uh, you'll you'll get uh, this inside of your subscription feeds. Hit the notification bell so that you know exactly when we go live. If you're on uh, LinkedIn, make sure you're following the the F5 Dev Central page, and if you're on Twitter, make sure you're following us on Twitter, which is at Dev Central. Uh, I'm at Boo Lam. You can follow me over here on Twitter or on LinkedIn, and otherwise we will see everybody uh, over on the Zoom. Bye for now.